Opium poppies being harvested in India. But this crop near Bijaipur in Rajasthan is unusual because it's produced legally, unlike the vast majority of the world's opium. India is the largest producer of legal opium gum. It accounts for about half of the material used globally by pharmaceutical industries to make drugs like codeine and morphine. The method of harvesting is an ancient, time-honored procedure. But inevitably, there are other darker traditions. A group of men prepare to drink opium. In this part of Western Rajasthan, known locally as India's Golden Triangle, opium use is socially, though not legally acceptable, and is widespread. Any excuse, the birth of a son, a wedding, a festival, a death, is reason enough to partake. But there's an even more disturbing side to the drug taking. Opium drinking begins very early in life. This boy is just five. But preventing abuse is difficult. The addicts in this country get opium from three different sources, mainly three sources. One is from the illicit production as a result of illegal or illicit cultivation, which is taking place mainly in the hilly areas of Himalayas in the northeast of this country and in the foothills in the northern side. The second possible source is a small percentage which is diverted from the licit source of cultivation to the illicit channels. And the third source is through international smuggling, either from Pakistan side or from Burma side. Opium production is a labor-intensive job, so the entire family helps. The lanced poppies produce a pink gum which is collected with the aid of a curved blade. No one is allowed to grow more than a fifth of a hectare of poppies. Those caught exceeding their quota are forbidden to grow it again and their excess crop is destroyed. Widely held myths from ancient times maintain that opium thickens the blood. That way the body bleeds less when wounded in battle or injured at work. There's also a belief that opium increases sexual potency and more importantly in a chronically famine prone desert region it's believed to help people work tirelessly without eating much. The raw opium paste is taken to be weighed before being shipped for processing. But in spite of strict control, some inevitably ends up on the local black market. There's no particular reason for this opium session. These farmers usually consume it twice a day before and after work. It's predominantly a male activity, although women sometimes give opium to young children to quieten them. There are an estimated 2 million opium addicts in India. About 20% of men in this part of Rajasthan are believed to be addicts, with 40% suspected of occasional use. Addicts create huge social problems. But some eventually seek help from an addiction center at Manaklao. Shivdan is one of those, arriving at the Manaklao center after 30 years of taking opium every day. On admission, he was examined and a case history was prepared. The first and worst phase lasts around three days when the inmate stops taking opium and goes cold turkey. This usually leads to severe vomiting, insomnia and cramps, as well as abdominal and chest pains. Doctors and nurses watch over this suffering. Shiv Dan has hit rock bottom and he fears he's among those who won't complete their treatment. He doesn't think he can go on and has begged to leave the center. He's saying, if you can't treat me, so please get me discharged, I'll go back to my home and I'll take my drugs again and I'll be happy with that. Because in this situation, in this withdrawal, it's very difficult for me to get me treated here. So it's very difficult for me to stay here. In this circumstances, I want to go back. Even more important than the pills and medical treatment handed out by the staff is the spiritual and emotional healing process. Around 80% of the patients who complete Manak Lau's course are cured of their addiction, something of which the center is justifiably proud. 
Part of the guiding philosophy of Manaklao is that a patient's moral strength is boosted by simple yoga exercises. City clerks and businessmen suffer alongside farmers, sharing and deriving strength to fight their common sickness of drug dependency. None of them has been compelled to attend the center, they're here voluntarily. All the patients are encouraged to seek their own form of atonement and to look deeply into the roots of their own addiction. Over all of this presides the camp's founder and leading light, Narain Singh Manaklao. Years ago, amazed by the economic deprivation caused by opium addiction, he wrote to the Rajasthan government outlining a proposal for a detoxification camp. The scheme was rejected, so he set up his own centre in February 1979. Similar camps followed, and the ensuing publicity assured a steady flow of funds. Posters reinforce the belief that addiction can kill, and self-help is the only way to kick it. Opium abusers coming to treatment centres are often above the age of 40 years. They've been abusing opium for at least more than 20 years before they come to the treatment centers. The reason why they come to the treatment centers is because they've already had a fairly dysfunctional life. Uh, the opium abuse may have led to some health problems. They may have had conflict in the family. It may have led to uh, a lot of economic problems. Or they may be the legal issues that are revolve around opium abuse. Despite his earlier misgivings, Shiv Dan managed to get through cold turkey. He's now fit enough to manage solid food, and his time at the Manak Cloud Detoxification Center is nearly over. Shiv is confident that when he leaves, he'll be cured of his addiction. I'm fine. I finished with opium now. I'm going back to my village. And I'm going to tell the other addicts to come to Manak Lao. But for every addict who is cured by centers like Manaklao, many more go untreated in Rajasthan villages where taking the drug is part of daily life. Youngsters are encouraged to join in opium drinking as a way of integrating them into male society. Others are driven to it by hardship or personal tragedy. My wife died and I was also ill. I had to take care of my children, but it was difficult for me to work. I started taking opium to get some energy. I had bad pains in my arms, and I could not sleep at night. That's why I started. The Manaklao Center operates an outreach program to get its anti-drugs message across in remote villages. Leaflets are handed out warning people of the consequences of taking opium. This poster reads, opium is not a medicine, it's like a poisonous lizard. The men listen politely enough to the outreach worker, but he has few illusions that his efforts are going to make much difference in a community where opium consumption is endemic. Still, he must try his best. He attempts to interest a shopkeeper in taking some of his anti-drug posters and leaflets. Again, he's met with polite indifference. Having done his best to distribute the message formally, he tries informally. The younger generation might take more interest than their elders. Hopefully after their game is over, one of the youngsters will actually read one of the leaflets. <laughs> 